M0 Nation, it is day five of the Safer Pilot Challenge today. We're demonstrating a rejected takeoff in real time. Zero Nation, hey, it's Jamie here. Day five of the 31 day Safer Pilot Challenge. I can't believe we're already five days in. And so far, I want you to not only comment down below to see who's five for five, but I also wanna see what have you taken home so far? I know we've produced a lot of good content this year and I wanna know what you have taken home. Maybe put it into your arsenal as well. But this is really where it should start, right here. I'm here in the run up area right now. And this is where your rejected takeoff should start. And as crazy as that sounds, what I'm trying to communicate with that is the briefing. A lot of people neglect the rejected takeoff briefing because it's something that should happen with every single takeoff. And I don't, I don't care if you're in a Cessna 150 all the way up to a Boeing 747. This is something where we need to brief anything special and what we're going to do in the event of a rejected takeoff. Because you know if. If we do take off, and we're lucky, we get to get airborne. However, we need to know what to do if something goes abnormal. So, two things that I wanna bring up to you, and it starts with that thorough rejected takeoff briefing. The first one is actually from the airplane flying handbook produced by the FAA, and it's on page 1615. I'm here on a beautiful day, dry runway, grooved runway too, light winds, and not a, not a cloud in the sky. But what I mean by that is you may have a wet runway, a slick runway. How many times have people gone on to runways that are usually used for landing where there is so much caked up rubber on there and it can actually, when it's wet, it can be slippery. So one of the things that the FAA puts in is a lot of a whole line, which this is meant for a lot of commercial aviation, which in the first five or six are the ones that are gonna pertain to general aviation. So. What I want to actually take from this is actually the second paragraph, and it's the last line of the second paragraph, which is, a brief moment of indecision may mean the difference between running out of runway and coming to a safe halt after an aborted takeoff. Okay. What does that mean for us? That is being a quick, decisive decision maker. Whenever we have something that goes abnormal on the runway, and it may be something that you don't feel right with, that doesn't sit right with you, it's something that you've done this takeoff a hundred times, and something is a little bit out of the ordinary on that one, maybe it's time to reject that takeoff. But you, there's so many things that we need to keep our eyes open for, and another thing that I wanted to do was actually from the Pilot's Operating Handbook. Always dive into this with your certain aircraft, but for a 2-3 Mike Zulu, a Cessna 172 Lima model, I thought a really good piece of information was actually on the takeoff power check, which is the first line, and it says, it is important to check full throttle engine operation early in the takeoff run. Any signs of rough engine operation or sluggish engine acceleration is good cause for discontinuing the takeoff. So, what does that mean for us? Another thing. We need to not take our time with applying full power. I want to be able to, all those all those numbers and performance charts in the AFM POH are, especially if you're doing a short field takeoff, are holding the brakes, making sure you got full power. However, a normal takeoff, sometimes we roll. We don't want to be, we want to be smooth, but get to full power relatively quickly so if anything were to go wrong, we're not eating up a lot of that runway. So I am post run up, and now I'm gonna get into my rejected takeoff criteria. So whenever we go through a rejected takeoff brief, I wanna go over the highlights. Not only the same exact thing that we go over every single time, but also things that are different per conditions, per airport, per weather, whatever it may be that is out of the ordinary that could be a factor. Especially whenever you have those summer days which are hot, high density altitude, maybe you're at a higher elevation. Maybe you had some inclement weather, you have a slick runway. You gotta pay attention to your accelerate stop distance. 
One of the things that I like to do every single time I go take off is I look at the aerial map. Just in case something were go to happen out of the ordinary past my rejection point. So one thing I'm gonna look at here, I'm here in McCollum. I'm at Kennesaw up in North Atlanta, more or less in Georgia. And I'm gonna look at McCollum Airport. I'm here at the end, I'm gonna be departing runway 27. Now, if we get to a certain point where I view that the engine isn't producing power or I'm not gonna have enough runway to make this take off or uh, I need to come to a stop, I'm gonna execute. One thing that I want you to pay attention to is whenever you do depart, and I'm departing runway 27 today, I, because of the temperature and the winds, I figured I'm gonna be airborne just a little bit prior or past taxiway Alpha 4. Now, on the other side of it, I wanna make sure that I, if the first half of the runway, if I don't like something, I'm gonna board. If I get off the runway and I have runway remaining, I'm going to nose over and land on the available runway. If I do get off the runway, take off with no runway remaining, and I am below pattern altitude, I'm gonna keep it within 30 degrees of the nose. And the nice thing about this one, if I do have it off, there's not a lot of fields that I could technically go for in this 30 degree cone, so to speak. There's a little bit of a field, but there's also a big highway. If I needed to, I could possibly set it down on the highway. Number two, Mike Tulu, Chapter Cessna on the three mile phone, proceed on the runway 27 for a high speed taxi, left turn at Bravo 2. All right, proceed on to runway 27 for a high speed taxi and left turn Bravo 2, Skyhawk 2, Tree Mike Tulu. Thank you. Okay, so demonstrating a rejected takeoff in real time. The runway's clear, I got all my lights off. We're doing a normal takeoff. Obviously, we briefed it. Ready to go. But this is where. This is where we have to pay attention. Alright, I'm advance the full throttle. Engine gauges are all in the green. Airspeed's alive. Everything is as normal right now. Coming up to our rotation. Boom! Engine hicks up. Okay, I want to go ahead and maintain directional control. Get that throttle back to idle. Maintain directional control and apply smooth but efficient braking. That is the key here, is to not lose control of the aircraft, but also get onto those brakes quick and efficiently without skidding, because you may not have a lot of runway to stop at. And this is where the good briefing comes into play, because if you have a good briefing, that, those are the best rejected takeoffs, ones that you already have a plan ready to go. So what'd y'all think? Day five of the Safer Pilot Challenge, rejecting a takeoff in real time. I want you to go out and practice it with the instructor. A lot of people, they don't get further past the rejected takeoff brief. So go out there and actually apply it. See what it's like whenever you do reject a takeoff on the runway. And especially do it in a place where it's a nice controlled environment where you may have a nice day. Get a feeling for what your aircraft can do. And I want you to, again, comment down below if you've ever done a rejected takeoff in real life or if you've actually uh, practice and simulated a rejected takeoff. But for that, that's day five. I'm gonna see you tomorrow in day six where we got even more fun to have. But for now, thank you so much for joining. I want you to keep studying, keep flying smart. I want you to keep the passion for aviation alive. I wanna thank everyone for joining me today because remember, a good pilot is always learning. I'll see you tomorrow, thank y'all. Hey aviators, before you take off, don't forget you can try m 0 Way Online Ground School completely free for two weeks. Jump in, explore the lessons, watch the videos, and take that virtual discovery flight and see exactly how our understanding-based teaching helps you master aviation, not just memorize it. And when you're ready to keep going, we've got options. Choose an individual course like private, instrument, commercial, or CFI FOI perfect if you're laser focused on your next certificate or rating. Or take things further with one of our curated pilot success memberships. Golden Bronze gives you unlimited access to all of our manned courses, webinars, and bonus content designed to help you grow from a student to safe, confident pilot. 
don't forget, we also now offer a membership tier specifically designed for those pilots who just want to stay up to date and have tools at their fingertips. Perks Pass. There's no courses, but still all things knowledge. So start your free two-week trial today at m0a.com slash trial and discover why thousands of pilots trust M0A to make aviation learning simple, effective, and fun. Because remember, a good pilot is always learning.